Okay, welcome back. This is the second video in a row. Woo! So you can watch them in order. Uh, second video, training uh, training video for the humble pumpkins. I'm actually gonna show you how we break and shape our grain bags. And more importantly, how we ensure that the damn bags are actually sealed. Because this is like literally a thing in the mushroom community where like sooner or later you're just like sealing the bag and it's not sealing and there's shit all over the place. So you just keep pressing and pressing, turning the heat up and eventually the bag just gets cut in half because it's all hot. Second, we're just gonna keep covering aseptic technique because it's sort of critical. All right, what do I have? I've got me, I've cleaned myself. I've gotten all the crap off of me. I've washed my hands, I've washed my face, watched the aseptic. Uh, technique training to do. So, I've got this. This is a pressure cooker. It's been cooling in front of the flow hood. Now, it is not sterile. The outside of it is not sterile. And what's inside of it? Well, I've sterilized the grain. There's no, like, real guarantee that what's inside is, air-wise, is sterile. So, I've dragged it in front of the flow hood, burping it, taking off our safety cover, lid now we've got six bags in here. these bags have expanded by about a uh, hundred percent during the cook this means that they are crammed in here now remember none of this is sterile right now just assume it's not wiggle it out see how sealed it is if your bag isn't sealed like this, the cook was wrong. You should feel bad. You wasted millet. So as you can see, these just pop out like this. Done. Okay. Now. I just took a sterile workstation to sterile everything else. I just spread a bunch of random crap all over it. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna wipe everything off. Why am I doing this? Over abundance of caution. It's sort of like one of those things where uh, we as human beings are really shitty at assessing risk uh, and danger. Uh, and so what we tend to do is we tend to fall on our own heads and we're like, okay, I'm in front of a flow hood, I've sprayed ISO all over the place, now I'm clean. The problem is that you're not thinking about risk factors. Like, did you blow your nose? Did you leave crumbs of stuff in your beard? Did you comb your hair like the scene in Gattaca where he's got the stone and he's like rubbing all his loose skin and everything off in the shower and lighting it on fire so he doesn't get caught? I watch a lot of movies. All right, now I'm re-sterilizing my workstation. I'm not working front to back because I didn't put anything over here. So what I'm doing is I'm like this and back. All right. Now I've got my grain bags. I'll actually lower this so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Grain bags are set aside. They are still vacuumed. See that? Solid as a rock. Now, when you pull these out of the cup, your first instinct may to just be immediately seal them. Do not do that. It will not work the way that you think that it works. Let me demonstrate. See this? This is a bag fresh out of the cook. Right, you can see there's screens all over the place, but 
there's little spots here at the bottom where the grain popped or it got over soaked or it got superheated. This is normal. Pop grains and things like that happen. It's okay, the mycelium doesn't really care. But what do we have? In this bag, we have a thousand grams of pure white milk. We have 500 grams of water. That is precise, okay? There's always gonna be 500 grams of water and a thousand grams of milk. What the difference is, is if you take these out of the pot and you seal them and you do not break and shake, there are two things that are immediately working against you. Number one, the moisture is not evenly distributed in here right now. You've got dry grains, you've got wet grains. The first thing you need to think about is how do you equalize? How do you spread all of those grains all over the place so basically the moist ones are touching all the dry ones and the dry ones are touching the moist ones and everything equalizes? That's number one. Number two, the reason why growing with millet and other smalling, smaller grains gets a bad rap in the mycology community is because there's quote unquote no air in between the grains. Well, if you take something and you suck all the freaking air out, e.g. a vacuum, of course there's no air between the grains. So what do you do? Well, you could take this compressed brick of millet, inject it with a bunch of LC and pray. Or you can give your mycelium a really good place to start. That's why we break shake and we make it nice and airy and we equalize everything. Let me show you. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some paper towels. Now, I'm actually gonna look for a bag that's got a bunch of schmutz in the lid. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so. Take a look at this bag. More importantly, you look right here. What you can probably see is that there's moisture and millet and other shit all up in here. Let me open it up and show you how bad that actually is. Bring it a little closer. See all that? If I were to take this bag as is and try to seal it, it would never seal, ever. Like, no matter what I do. And the reason why is thermodynamics. God, I love that shit. Why? An impact sealer works off of a basic principle. If you superheat something really fast, it will melt. That only works if you are heating something to a differential, or uh, uh, to a difference high enough to, say, evaporate water which is not the same temperature that melts plastic, right? So what you've got to do is when you've got a bag like this that's full of moisture and everything else like that, you've got to get rid of it. Otherwise, what will happen is your impact sealer is busy trying to boil off the water, cook the millet that's probably in your seal, uh, and melt plastic around a bunch of like dirt, rocks, and dust, and what, what God, God knows what. In other words, no matter how many times you run your impact sealer or how hot you get it, well, you can get it hot enough to seal the bag, don't get me wrong, but you have a higher chance of melting the bag. This is why we do the follow-up. Take the bag. I'm actually gonna re-sterilize myself because I've been touching everything. See, wet ISO, wet ISO, dry the ISO. Dry the ISO, dry the ISO. All right, here's the bag. Lift it up. Now, notice this is a vacuum. I'm turning this upside down and I'm shaking it. Nothing is happening. It's because the air, all the air got sucked out. It's not because millet is such a small grain. That's gonna... All right. Open it up, break the vacuum. Get air in there. Why? I'm in front of a flow hood. This is first air. The principle of first air is that if I'm exposing something that I've sterilized in front of a flow hood in a sterile environment, the air that goes in the bag is sterile. All right, clean paper towel. You're gonna take that paper towel and you're gonna shove it in and you're gonna wrap it around the first couple of inches. You 
Make that a couple inches. It's gonna dry that shit up. Hear all that? That's all the moisture and dirt and other crap being pulled out of the first two inches of that bag. Now I can seal it. But what have I not solved? The moisture distribution and the air problem. So then, before I break and shake, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold it down. You can actually roll it down a couple of times. Why am I doing this? Everything in here is sterile. What I'm about to do is agitate this entire thing and move it all over the place. What don't I want? If I accidentally move it too far, I don't want contamination flying in. And I don't want like random things flying in. Over abundance of caution. So now what am I doing? Well, I've got an air in the bag. And actually I'll let a little bit more in. And I folded it over. Now what I'm doing is I'm breaking and shaking it. So I squeeze down here to break up, break up the uh, wet stuff. Then I'm gonna use physics in my favor. Now the grains at the very bottom of this bag or on the side where it's all been superheated are overly moist and they've been popped. That means that they are heavy. They are heavier than the, uh, they are heavier than the drier grains that are at the top. So what do we do? Notice I'm squeezing, I'll slow it down. Squeeze. You can even let it drop a little bit. Shake everything down. Squeeze the air out of the bag and then fold it down. Why do we fold it down? Number one, we're pulling the air back out of the bag just because it makes it easier to pack. Number two, if there's air in the bag and I transport this, it'll pop. This is the, one of the big things that we've run into in the last month, shipping a lot more of this in bulk. If there's air in the bag, then there are two things that can fail. Number one, the bag can just pop. The bottom will pop. We've had bottoms pop in the bag. We've also had the filter patches, and I'll show you that in a second. See that filter patch? It's glued on, <laughs> right? If you're too rough on these things, it's gonna tear apart. And so what we realize is if there's a bunch of air in the bag and we transport it and there's like 60 pounds in that thing, those bags will pop and they'll contain. And you won't even realize it. So, pro tip. Now, I folded it over for a secondary reason. I just want this nice, flat, and folded when I seal it. So, I've tuned in the sealer today, and it's sitting just between four and five. But, I don't trust it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it down here, get this all nice and folded, slip it under here, press this down. Now, notice the light just went off. That means the heating cycle's already over. But I'm still sitting on this thing like Fat Albert sitting on a sandwich. Why? Because when it's superheated, the plastic melts. If you don't let it cool in place, guess what? It does the seal. What you get is a super hotted little line of plastic that really isn't sealed. Now, I didn't have to hold it down that long, but let me show you what this looks like. So this looks pretty well sealed, right? Wrong. See that? It's not sealed. In fact, I just pushed it apart with my fingers. So I'm gonna pause and turn up the heat, just the scotch, not a lot. I'm gonna redo the bag fold, push the air back out. Now, turning up the heat, got that seal to actually seal. Right, see that? It's sealed now. And you can tell because it's actually got a texture, right? This impact sealer has this nice little ridge down here. It actually leaves a really nice texture that you can feel through the gloves every time you do a bag seal. So this bag is in theory sealed. Here's the problem with this. That's one seal that we've done. And we already know eh, seals are the weakest link. Behind the filter patch, seals are gonna be your weakest link dealing with brain things, right? So, what we do is we take and we move it about a quarter inch up and we do another seal. 
So now we're at two seals. Now this is on the same side. I haven't put the bag in. All right. Now we got a second seal. See that texture? So I've been laying the bag like this. We're gonna do one last seal. Now you can add as many seals as you want, but here I flip the bag over. Now, if you think about melting plastic and things together, if you do it all on one side, the layer on the reverse side never actually has a lot of heat applied to it. So by flipping it, what we do is we have both sides um, actually have direct heat applied. So in that way, it will actually melt into place and seal the bag like tight as a, tight as a friggin' bolt. Right, so here, done. Now this isn't as straight as I usually like it, but you can see the texture. I can feel it through my gloves. And more importantly, when I do this, rub, rub everything together, plug on the bag, quick and violently straight like a fucking redheaded stepchild. Guess what? No grain come out. All right. Now this bag is done. I have escaped the air. I've got it sealed. Check it out. It's all nicely equalized. Now all I got to do is apply a uh, injection port, ship it out to a customer. Welcome to the humble fungus. If this today is your first day, you must make millet. <laughs>